Hi guys, this has been requested literally twice, uh, so I decided to do a video about it. Uh, people were asking about how to get uh, to get rid of the, the that window at the very start um, when you pop up Unity when you do a build that says what resolution do you want. Um, so that's what I did. I, I created a video and it does exactly that. It saves it. It does it uses JSON serialization to save those out there. You could use player prefs if you wanted, but I use JSON serialization because. Uh, I like Jason, so um, not that Jason. Well, Jason in the Argonauts was great, but you know Ray Harryhausen was a genius. But anyway, um, so uh, if you like settings files, if you like, uh, if you want to know how to, to do custom settings, then um, follow along this uh, video, and hopefully uh, you will find it helpful. It is quite long, though. I will warn you, it's like an hour and long. So. Uh, okay, so uh, we get started uh, creating the UI after the fade. So we don't, don't normally start off with this, but I'm going to start off with a checklist because I want to um, build... Th there's a few things I want to do in this this video. It's not just about building the, the UI for the, the, um, uh, the, the custom screen itself. I also want to build um, a singleton for when we want to load this back into the scene. So. Uh, or we want to load this back into the game, we want to load the settings back into the game once we've created them. So I want to uh, get everything right here. So I want to do um, build UI for, uh, make this a little bit bigger, uh, build UI, I'm going to come back to this list and make sure we've got everything. So build UI for custom uh, settings screen, um, serialize, deserialize the custom settings, create a single ton to load in the settings, load in the settings, um, what I want to do, I want to create a single ton to load in the settings when uh, the, the program starts, and then I want to apply the settings on load, which means we need some default settings as well, which it's fine, we'll get to that. Or we'll just take whatever the, the, the setting is that we get there. So that's really what I want to do just now. Um, and for the, the UI, I'm just going to create a very, very simple UI. Um, so I'm going to create a text box, where are we? Uh, let's zoom in on here. Um, and, and again, you can tidy this up pretty and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give this a uh, there, I'm going to make that uh, 28 instead of that because it's very, very small. Um, and I'm going to call this quality. Um, and you'll see that we, we build this up quite quickly. Um, so if you're kind of wondering why I'm, I'm doing this um, or how I'm doing this, then you might want to check out the videos are, that are in the, the card up there. I'm just going to make sure I'm recording this because I don't have anything. Okay, I'm recording it. So if you want to check, there's going to be card information up there. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just checking it and recording. Because um, <laughs> uh, I'm paranoid about things. I, I did a video through the week and uh, I didn't record anything. And it was, it was the best video I've ever made. So this is, I guess, just a tribute. Um, so uh, I'm just making, like, paranoidly making sure that it's... Uh, it's here um, and also I'm, I'm not sponsored by uh, these guys I'm, I'm just really thirsty so I'll, I'll so I'm just gonna try and hide the label every time so every time you see me drinking it here it's not because I'm sponsored by them it's just that you know I'm thirsty okay um, <clears throat> so this is gonna be our quality thing here um, and I'm going to move the anchor for that up to the top left, so that's going to be clamped up there. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to have a drop down list for this. So I'm going to add my drop down, which I'm just going to leave as the same size there. I'm just going to leave it as that text just now. I'm not going to bother too much uh, with that. And I'm going to make that the top right. And then I'm going to duplicate both of these. Um, and this time I am going to make that, uh, this is going to be resolution. Um, and then I am also going to have another one, which is going to be uh, full screen. 
And you can add other things in here as well. So you can add audio and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm just doing this for uh, for the um, the resolution. Um, so where do we want this? We want this to be a toggle button. Uh, and we can make this bigger, but I'll, I'll just leave it again as, as is just now because um, we want to get the functionality right and so the text for this is going to be uh, full screen uh, and it's going to be centered and I also want to make that um, white colored okay and that is also going to be top left um, and I want two buttons as well so I want uh, this button here um, and my button I'm going to make that text a bit bigger 28 and that's going to be apply and my other button is going to be cancel so my other button cancel is just going to take me back to the, the main menu uh, so this is my two buttons here I'm going to move them down to here um, and I'm going to make that both point to the bottom left there. Uh, I'm going to create my new folder. Scenes, and this is going to be options. Um, and that is it. That's the that's as far as the UI is concerned. That's all that's there. And we're going to clear these out just now because we don't want these to be in here. Uh, we want these to be separate. So we want these to show the quality. Now, what do I mean by quality? Um, if you go to build settings, that's probably an easier way to get to it than this, but whatever. Uh, if you go to quote, uh, build settings, click on player settings. Um, oh no, it's not in there. What am I talking about? Uh, project settings quality. Uh, if you go in here, you'll see that we have fastest, fast, simple, good, beautiful, fantastic. So that's the quality setting. So it goes from uh, the worst, which is going to be index zero, and it goes to the best, which is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be index five. So there's six settings, and you can see that we can choose ones of these. Um, so that's from one particular object. That's the quality object. We're going to use another object called the screen object to get the list of resolutions, uh, and we're going to populate those resolutions inside these options here. So for our drop down, this is going to be a uh, drop down for resolution. Resolution drop down. So I'm going to give that a name so that I know what it is um, on the, the, pro the hierarchy. So this is going to be quality drop down. Um, and I'm going to get rid of all of these options here. So I'm going to get rid of that one, that one, and that one. And similarly, I'm going to do the same thing for this as well, which I could have done at the start and then duplicated it, but whatever. Um, and now I need to create some scripts because obviously I'm, I'm going to have to create a script uh, that controls this here, but I also want to create a singleton script. And the singleton script is going to be um, loaded at the very start. So I'm going to create a, a scene that all it does is it preloads everything and then we load the main menu or we load the splash screen or, or whatever other menus we want. But that one screen, its entire purpose is to load a singleton into memory and then load the settings, apply the settings and then start the game. That's really its, its purpose. So I'm going to call uh, one of them uh, I'm just going to call it settings, uh, or maybe I call it game settings. Game settings is probably a better one. And then I'm going to call the other one uh, option option scene controller. So option scene controller and game settings. That's the two um, files that I'm going to create. Um, okay, so the option scene controller is going to uh, control the UI um, and then it's going to apply settings to our, our, our singleton here. Now a singleton is an object that gets created um, once and once only per game really. Uh, you can do it per scene but but generally I, I tend to keep them as per game. So uh, that's what we're going to do for this one here. Now you could, you could create a generic um, 
a singleton pattern, but I'm just going to use the, the, the one that I sort of follow uh, every time I create a singleton. Um, and maybe we'll come back and, and revisit singletons later on. Maybe I'll do like a, a video on actual uh, how you could like create a, a generic singleton because I mean singletons are um, useful and evil at the same time. I think we'll go with that. Useful and evil at the same time. Oh. Pardon me, sorry, that's the coffee speaking. Um, they um, they 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 help you, but they also kind of create um, you know a one-stop shop for for failure, I guess, um, or at least kind of bottlenecks as well, because you, you have this one canonical object that you, you go through things. But for game settings, uh, for things like this, it's a, it's actually perfect. So um, I'm going to create a region, uh, unity, singleton pattern. Uh, and all this stuff is going to go, all the stuff for the singleton is going to go in here. Um, and then we are going to create the methods and the properties and everything like that that goes for that goes with the, the game settings here. So the first thing we do is we uh, we have if I can spell it static. Uh, we want to have a private static member field. Now static means that it's to do with the type, so it's applied to the game settings type and not to an instance of that type. So although we're creating a mono behavior here, we're only going to be ever creating one instance of this mono behavior. And it's actually quite a neat trick that we do to actually instantiate that for when we don't load scenes um, from that very first screen. So remember, the idea is that we have a, an initial screen that's going to load all these singletons. In this video, just one singleton. Um, but in uh, your game you might have multiple singletons, but we're going to have a neat trick that uh, we're going to force it to load this this uh, singleton. So um, stay tuned. So we've got uh, private static, um, and this is going to be uh, um, an object of this type. So I'm going to call it game settings, and I'm going to call it instance. Um, the underscore there just means that there's a private member field. It doesn't mean anything else. You could just have it as just um, that there, but I, I've, I've started putting underscores um, for instances anyway. Um, for member fields that are just member fields, I do like you know int i, so that's a member field. Um, but for this instance, I tend to put it as underscore instance. Don't ask why. It's just it's me. So it, you can do whatever you want to call it. You could you know call it capital instance or whatever. But I, I that's my convention anyway, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so then I want to have a public uh, static game settings instance. So this is why I call it underscore instance. Um, again, you could just call it lowercase i instance. But I'm going to have this public uh, property that's going to return an instance of game settings. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to try and get an instance of this in the scene. And if it doesn't exist, I'm going to create an object. And then I'm going to add a component of this type to that object. And then um, I am going to um, load everything in and do what I need to do when it awakens. So, so I'm going to do get. And I'm going to say uh, if instance equals null. In other words, we haven't got anything set. We want to do whatever it is we need to do. And then at the very end of that, we want to return instance. Now, there's no way to set this. We're only going to do a getter for this. We only want to ever get this. Um, we're going to plot, we're going to use methods inside there, but we only ever want to get this instance. So I'm then going to say um, instance equals find object of type uh, game settings. So that tries to find that that object. If that doesn't happen, what I want to do is I want to create an object and then add this component to it. Because remember, this is a this is a mono behavior, so it's a component that you apply to an object. So I'm going to say that this is um, if instance equals null. So in other words, I tried to find something it didn't exist. Uh, game object, uh, new game object. Um, can I put that in there? I think I can put the name in here. So I'm going to call this uh, auto game settings. So now we can see, or maybe we call that singleton actually. So now when, when we look at the object hierarchy, and we'll do that in just a second, 
uh, once, we've, once we've built this script. Um, we'll see this object appear once we create the, the scene. So uh, I want to create that object and then I want to say instance equals go dot add component uh, game game settings. So now I've added that component to that new game object and all I need to do now is return it back. So this is my instance of the game settings class instance of the game settings class this uh, there should only be one of these. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, and now that's our, that's the only thing we need to do for our singleton. So that's everything that we need to do for, uh, for the actual singleton itself. So um, we just check to see if it's null. If it is null, we try and find it in the scene. And uh, if it's equal to null, then we do that. Um, and that's it. Otherwise, we're returning that instance. So it shouldn't ever be in the scene. This is kind of the beauty of you know, writing your own stuff. Um, but if it is, then we just use that, that instance there. Otherwise, we create our own here. So there's only ever one. There can only be one. It's the, it's the Highlander of design patterns. There can only be one in, uh, uh, singleton. So um, this is our public properties that we have now. So we have our uh, public properties. Um, and this is uh, the genius part of creating this uh, game settings here. So I'm going to say uh, is ready, um, get set. So this is indicates that the the game settings have been loaded and are and the object is ready okay so when we call is ready on our game settings dot instance we call inside so when we do uh, we, will, we will call it like game settings dot instance actually i'll come back to that in just a sec once we've, we've done the call for it um uh, if it is that consistent void awake and we'll say is ready equals true okay so we'll just mark that as being can object so right now all we're going to do is we're going to mark this object as is ready uh, because i want to show you how we're going to call this and how we're going to force uh, the creation of our singleton even if we don't have it so even if we don't have, even if we haven't loaded the scene and all this kind of stuff, this is this is a great way of a great way of testing your code and making it um, uh, you you're basically kind of isolating it because you want to say okay I want to run I want to test the option screen but I don't want to go through the whole game I don't want to sit through the the, the uh, menu loading and maybe there's a splash screen and all that kind of stuff I just want to test the option screen so I can load up the option screen in my editor and I can press. Uh, control P to run it, or option, or command P, whatever it is, uh, and then I can run the scene, and then the game settings will load, and then I can I can do something with it. So, in our other class, our other mono behavior, we have option scene controller. So let's get rid of the update. Uh, so right now, void, it's void start. I'm going to change that to I enumerator start, and that means that we've now changed start into a coroutine. And the way that we uh, force the load of the game settings, because we want to use the game settings, because we're going to say um, wait. So this is going to be wait for the game settings to become available. Apply the um, apply the contents of quality and screen to the drop downs. Um, apply the current settings to apply the current settings to um, the user's preferences. Preferences. Okay. 
So wait for the game settings to become available. Here's how we do it. We do while game settings dot instance dot is ready. Actually we do dot is ready and we say not is ready, you'll return null. So what this does is in calling this, it actually forces us to create an instance of game settings. Because if we do game settings.instance, so this is at the, the class level, game settings.instance. If I go to the, the, in here it says, is instance null? If we're loading this scene by itself, instance is null. Um, oh, we need to do one more thing, actually. Um, so we then try and find this object. If that object doesn't exist, then we create the game object and we add the uh, game settings mono behavior script to it. We also want to do don't destroy on load game object. So create a game object that is a holder for our game settings script, add the game settings script to the holder object, and then finally we want to say tell Unity not to unload this object. There's one per game. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit uh, clearer, I hope. Um, so now, um, if I go into here and I tidy this up a bit, and then we go back into this one here, I'm going to create a new game object. Um, and my new game object is going to be called, uh, what do I call this? Options Scene Controller. And I'm going to add my script to there. And right now it's, it's not populated, there's nothing in there. Um, but when we run this, you'll know, just keep watching over here, you'll see that when we run it, you'll now see that we have a don't destroy on load scene. And inside there we have our singleton game settings, which has our game settings object applied to it. And when we unclick play, you see it disappears because that scene is, wasn't loaded in the editor. So this is a, a, a great way of, of keeping your uh, settings in memory throughout the game because you want to. I mean, it's. You, uh, I think we used the singleton pattern when we did the the JSON serializing. Um, I'm pretty sure we did anyway. Uh, but anyway, it's the same same deal here. So for game settings, um, what we want to do is we want to go and grab some um, some proper uh, well some uh, fields from the quality settings. So what I want to do here is I want to, um, I want public properties. Do I want public properties? Yeah, let's do public properties. So I want to do public, uh, um, let's do I list, um, I think, I think it's string quality settings private set um, public i list resolution resolutions get private set so I want to add these two properties here so this is going to be the uh, unity quality settings um, Unity res resolutions, and then I want I want to have what the user has chosen, um, and what I want for the user to be chosen is I actually want to create my own script for this, so I want to have uh, another script here, and this is going to be um, user game options. This is going to be user game options. Um, and I'm going to reload all. Yeah, sure. And where are we? User game options. Okay, so this is not going to be model behavior. 
um, this is going to be um, public int quality um, public bool full screen um, and then this is going to be public int um, width public int height and we'll just leave it at that for our setting so this is our quality setting uh, screen resolution width screen resolution oh I can't spell height can't spell resolution either um, and then the last one is going to be uh, true if the game is full screen. Now what we'll see um, quite quickly is that debugging this is a bit of a nightmare because uh, we can't actually test this inside the editor but we'll get as much as we can get done. Let me get rid of all of them as well. So that is the user's um, game settings options. Game setting options. Um, and then inside here, we are going to have public user game options, and this is just going to be user options get private set. The user's current game options. Okay, so these two here are fairly trivial. Um, I am going to do. Um, uh, so we have quality settings, so quality settings equals new list string, and then it's just going to be quality um, Quality scripting, quality settings. Oh, did I call out? Ah. Uh, uh oh. Well, that's that's just stupid. Okay. Um, I'm gonna call that. Um, I don't want to call it qualities. Uh, let me, uh, uh, let's call it quality names. I'm gonna call it quality names there. And I'm going to say quality names equals new string, and then it's going to be quality settings. So now I have my class back. Dot names. And that gets me my names. Okay. And then I want to say resolutions equals new list resolution. And then this is going to be screen dot resolutions. So those are easy. Um, this one is going to be a little bit trickier because what I want to do is I want to say user options equals load options. And then I'm going to have a private method that's going to handle this here. So this is going to be user options. Uh, load options uh, and everything's going to be handled inside here so um, let's have um, region um, static um, names static read only string uh, and I want to call this so static read only because it it's, doesn't change and it, it's only going to be set once. So the string is going to be um, settings file equals, and I'm going to call this um, settings.json. JSON. Uh, so we're going to use JSON again because it's handy. Uh, the name of the settings file. 
So if we change this any time, then, then this goes back to here. So that's perfect. So uh, I want to say that uh, full path is path which is in system.io. So remember you can do control period and then that brings up this here or you can just add system using system.io. So path.combine and it's going to be application. Uh, persistent data path comma settings file. And that's going to be if file exists um, full path. Uh, do something else, return new user game options. So we're just going to return a blank one for now. Um, otherwise, what we want to do is we want to do, we want to get the JSON contents there. So we're going to do equals file dot uh, read all text, full path. And then we want to say uh, return JSON utility dot uh, from JSON. These are game options, uh, Jason. and then that will return everything back to um, in here. So we'll serialize out the quality, width, height, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to say, um, so that is my region private helper methods. Region, um, and this is going to be load the users current options if any. So if they have options, then we're going to load them. Otherwise, they're not going to have any options. Um, or we can make that null, and then but then, okay, let's just leave it as blank just now and see what problems we get into. Uh, we're also going to have to have. Um, that up a bit, uh, and then that public method is going to be public void um, save settings, and then its settings going to be quality um, quality um, int width int height, and then bool um, Now we could pass this in as just a, this a unit user game object, but again, we'll, we'll see how we, we get on here, but that's that's good enough for just now. So we'll save the player's options. Okay, so we're gonna load everything. So we're gonna create our, um, our, re our quality names and our resolutions. I'm going to create our user options here and then we're going to load everything into memory. All right, so I think we're pretty much done with this. The only thing we haven't done is the, the save settings, but again, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, I think we want to concentrate on the UI now, so the, the sort of look and feel of, of the, the UI. So hopefully you're all kind of following along at home with this. Take another sip of my non advertised. Um, by the way, apparently this is a, coming to my. Um, my old, uh, not quite hometown, but I, I used to live there, Glasgow. So uh, yeah, you're getting Timmy's. So you guys can complain about it. As much as people over here do. It's, the coffee's fine. Uh, McDonald's is better. Um, okay. Um, right. So we go to our option screen here. What I want to do is I want to have um, public drop down, quality drop down. Actually, I'll just call it quality. Public drop down resolution, and you'll see that we have red squigglies there. We just do the con uh, control period, and then we can uh, add our Unity Engine UI, and that gives us access to that there. So uh, we don't have um, we don't have um, these populated just yet. So what we want to do is we want to wait until the game settings has loaded. So in other words, everything's coming to everything. All the game settings have loaded, and then we're going to apply those settings now to the quality uh, options. So I'm going to say quality 
uh, clear options. So I'm going to clear those options and then we say quality dot add options. And then it's just going to be game settings dot instance dot quality names. And that's it. That's all I'm going to add. Why is that? Why is that not liking it? Because it needs a list. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. So long as we know. So we go back to here and we change this to list. So this is sometimes what you got to do. You got to, you know, fact these things out, I guess. Uh, although I should have probably known that. Whatever. So that was an easy fix to make. So it, the, the add options here needs a, a list. And that's why uh, that ended up being a red squiggly line there. I thought I could get away with just doing an eye list, but which is a, a little bit better because we don't need the full body of, of list. But uh, that's what we've got now. Okay. So we click back over here. We now have our quality there. And we'll see that it's got a null. And the reason why it's got a null is because we haven't dragged and dropped these things across here. So I'm going to drag across the quality drop down into quality and the resolution drop down, which we'll do in just a sec, over to there. And then I'm going to run this. And you see that we now have it as fastest, fast, simple, good, beautiful, fantastic. Okay. Um, and that looks good. Okay. All right. Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out what the, the current setting is. So if, if the user options hasn't been selected, what I want to do is I want to set those values uh, in here to be the current options. So I'm going to change that uh, instead of just being a blank user options, I'm going to change that to quality equals quality settings dot, and I think it's current level. Is the name of there? No, current level is not it. Dot index. No. There's got to be one here, surely. Names. Set quality level. Gotta be a get quality level, surely. Get quality level. There you go. Returns the current graphics quality level. That's the one we need. Get quality level. So we want to set it to be the current quality level because I want to set that index correctly. So if we haven't, if we've never set this before, we need to set it to be the default values. So the next one is going to be full screen equals. That's going to be screen dot full screen. So is the game running in full screen? I don't know yet. Probably not. Uh, and then I want to say the height is going to be screen dot height, and the width is going to be screen dot width. Okay. So I'm going to break that down into uh, a couple of lines here. So we're going to set the quality level, the full screen, the height, and the width. Okay. So that's our new user game options. Our new user game option is going to be the current quality level, the full screen, and the height and the width. Okay. So if I go back to here now, I want to apply the contents of the quality and screen to the drop down. So quality, and I'm going to change that there, and screen. So I want to say quality dot. Um, I really should watch my own videos. Um, you're all screaming at me now, I know. <laughs> um, what is it again? Uh, okay. Why am I not finding this? Why is this not options? Um, okay, well, clearly, 
uh, I can't remember this. So it's not select because select is just select the selectable value. There you go. So value is going to be game settings dot instance dot, and then it's going to be the user options dot quality. So it's whatever the user options it. This is a bit convoluted, but it just means that we can get all these these values back. So what we can do though is we can um, have a variable here, so we can make this a little bit easier for us. Uh, so we can call this user, and then we'll change that to user options, and then we just do user dot quality. So now our our quality is now set for our user quality. Um, so now running this. Uh, we should have, it should be fantastic. Yeah, there you go. So it should be set to fantastic because remember it was fastest earlier on, it was set down to there uh, because uh, it didn't know which one to select. So now that the, it's work, now that it's actually bringing the, the correct values in, uh, it's now defaulting to fantastic. So if I go into, this probably won't work because I've never tried it yet, but let's try quality. So the current setting is there. Um, can I set this to be this one? Uh, maybe I can. Let's try and see if we can set this to simple. Yeah, okay, so there you go. So I've changed that to, to simple. Um, and if I change this to good, now the default is good. So when we come in here, the default is now good. So our default is fantastic. And we're going to leave it as fantastic because obviously you want it to play it as being the, the best that it can possibly be. So it now defaults to fantastic. Okay. Um, Okay, um, and then I want to add the screens to there. Now, the screens are a bit trickier. So now I have to do, um, for each resolution, I want to add that resolution to um, the list. So I want to say, um, for each resolution in game settings, dot instance dot resolutions uh, I want to create a formatted string that's got the width and the height like multiplied together so I'm going to say string format equals string dot format and then it's going to be whatever that value is multiplied by whatever that value is so that value is going to be resolution dot width resolution dot height. Now, uh, is it C sharp six? C sharp six allows me to actually put that inside here, um, which is really nice. So that string would actually then look like, um, if I just comment that one out there, uh, it would actually look like uh, this, which is the, this is the, the best thing I think I've ever seen. Um, which is this, which you don't even need the format for. But unfortunately, it doesn't allow us it. It's, oh yeah, it's not available in C Sharp 4, it's version uh, 6 and above. So uh, it allows us to put it inside the string. It's, it's genius. It's really good. Um, okay, so I want to add that there, and then I want to say uh, list string uh, uh, resos. Um, Resos dot add the formatted string, and then at the end of that, I then want to add those that list to the list of options. So then I want to add uh, resolution. Oh, that's called resolution. Ah. Well, let's call that res. We'll do control dot again, um, and we'll rename that. Okay, so that's res in there, so hopefully that's not changed. Okay, so then we'll do resolution dot clear options, resolution dot add options, resos. So that'll be us adding our resolutions there. All right, um, this is turning into a long video. We're at like 45 minutes almost already. Thanks. And that's with a couple of cuts. 
for sneezes and people coming downstairs and stuff. All right, so now we have our resolutions. And you'll see that we have a bunch of duplicate resolutions. And the reason why we have a bunch of duplicate resolutions is because uh, if we actually do um, this, uh, we will do this at uh, height. Um, refresh rate, that's the one I was looking for. So if I do this and I add the refresh rate, you'll see that the refresh rate is, uh, there's hundreds of them. So there's 59, 59, 59. I'm assuming these are all at 60. Uh, but you see there's still quite a bit of them. So we want to get rid of that. We just want to have the, the values that um, are already there. So um, how are we going to do this? Um, okay, so I want to check to see the last, the last resol. I want to I want to check the last resolution and make sure it doesn't exist. So, um, right. okay. So int last. Let's call it last width equals minus one and last height equals minus one. So I'm gonna make the last width and last height minus one. And I'm gonna say if last width is not equal to res.width, and last height is not equal to res.height, Add those to there and then say last width equals res dot width, last height equals res dot height. So, okay, so if I, I'm coming in here and I'm, and it's minus one, so that's fine. So if I want to change that to, to so 640 by 480, so the first one is 640 by 480, that goes through. So, Uh, I think that's got to be or. So or the last height is not the same as that one there. So if that one is not the same as that, and that one's not, the, or that one's not the same, add that, move on to the next one. Because then we only want to have the, re we're going to set the, the, the uh, refresh rate to be zero, which is the, def the default, so it's the highest one of the, the card. Uh, Unity figures that out by itself. So we're going to apply that there. Okay, so that's much more manageable. So you'll see that we now have, uh, like, I mean, there's still a lot of resolutions, but they're all, you know, they're all, you know, uh, they're all, uh, they're all defaulted to that. So I am going to say then, uh, I want to also check to see what the the current index is. So I'm going to say int. Index equals uh, minus uh, equals zero uh, int, and then this is going to be current resolution index equals minus one. So I'm going to say uh, that's going to be index plus plus inside there. So we're only interested in, in incrementing the index if we're uh, bigger than. Actually, no, we're not interested in. It's got to be every single one that we do this. So the current selected index, no, it has to be that because that's the only ones that are going to be in there. Um, so I want to say um, if the last width equals user dot width and last height equals user dot height current res index equals index. So 
so that's the current index and then I want to say resolution dot value equals that Yeah, so this one, obviously this one, the, the quality settings is fairly easy. You just add the options to it. The resolution one is more difficult, but uh, you get the idea is that you're, you're going through all the resolutions. You only want to show the, the difference, the different resolutions, not the same one. You don't want like 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080. 1080. Uh, you just want to simplify it for the user. Um, and then at the very end there, you want to clear the options uh, from the resolution, you want to add the filtered out options and then set the, the current value. So this should default to, I think it defaults to 640 by 480 inside the editor. Well, we'll see. Yeah, there you go, it defaults to 640 by 480. Uh, I don't think we can get it to change in here. Even if we can get it to change, I think it doesn't, it doesn't actually change. Um, we'll see it's gonna call my bluff and blow up in my face but whatever uh, and then we have our full screen here all right <clears throat> um, so um, I think what we also want to do is we also want to keep a list of these resolutions as we go through uh, so that we have them on hand so I'm gonna create a list resolution and then this is gonna be uh, we need to know the index of that resolution though. Or do we? No, we don't. We don't. We, don't, we really don't. We don't. We're not interested in that. Um, so, to apply the current settings to the user preferences, um, which we're going to do in just a sec. So, I need to have uh, that's our start. So, I also need to have public void, and then this is going to be apply clicked, but void, uh, cancel, clicked, um, and that's just going to be scene manager dot load scene uh, main menu. So we're going to create a, a scene called main menu. Right now we don't have one. And then apply clicked is also going to, to load the main menu, but it is going to also do um, uh, you know what we we do need that we do need that resolution because we need to have it for the applied there so sorry resolution um, and this is filtered resolution so this is a list of filtered resolutions so our filtered li list of resolutions is going to be uh, just a, a new list of filtered resolutions. And we're going to add each one of these that we have filtered out to this list. So I'm going to add that resolution there. So add the filtered resolution to the list. And we'll tidy this up here as well. Create a neatly formatted string to add the drop down um, figure out if oops this is the user's current resolution why can I spell resolution uh, okay, and then inside here, the applied click is going to be resolution. Um, uh, resolution is going to be filtered res, and then it's going to be the selected value of the resolution. So it's going to be resolution dot value um, int quality is going to be oops. Quality is going to be quality dot value. So that's the, the value is the selected um, option in the list. So it starts off at zero and moves to n. Uh, and then uh, full is going to be 
um, we're going to have a Boolean value in here. So full screen. So then we're going to do that inside here. So we also need a public void um, full screen clicked bool value. Uh, and this is going to be full screen equals new value. So this is our <clears throat> event handler for the full screen toggle button. So the user is going to toggle the button and it's going to change that value there. So this is going to be uh, the user's selected value. Apply button click. Um, and so we are going to do game settings dot instance dot save settings and then we're going to specify the, the quality, the width, height and full screen. So we're going to use quality which is going to be qual. Uh, the width is going to be res dot width, uh, res dot height and then full screen which is going to be full screen. Um, and that save settings is also going to apply those settings. So we're going to call apply settings twice. We're going to call it once when we load the game and then twice when uh, again when we save the settings. Uh, and that's really the only time we need to, to call that. So we're going to do that there. What else am I missing? So I need to uh, apply these buttons here. So this is my uh, apply changes and this is the cancel changes okay here's a neat trick for you so I want to I don't want to go through and do the on click several times so what I found is if I if I select the, the buttons that I want especially if I have more than one button uh, if I select two buttons there and then I click on plus I, I now have this here and I can drag my controller object that contains those those uh, events to in here and then I just choose the, the functions uh, just one of the functions that I want so applied clicked and then all I need to do is just go to uh, cancel changes and then I go down here and you see that it's already got applied clicked there and then I just click on cancel clicked and that's a lot easier than doing it singly one at a time all that kind of stuff uh, I also want to change that toggle button as well so that's going to be full screen toggle so this one's slightly different because I want to have um, it's going to be a, a dynamic call so I'm going to do option scene control and then this time it's going to be full screen clicked because it's a dynamic boolean value it's whatever the boolean value is in here which means I also need to know what this toggle button is because I need to be able to set it in the code so I need to do uh, public toggle um, toggle, uh, full screen toggle, and so my full screen toggle is going to be that toggle button. So I'm going to drag that in there. So when I load everything in, um, where's the other one? Apply the current settings to user preferences. Oh yeah, I don't. I, I want to apply that just now. I want to do. Full screen toggle dot. Um, what's that called? It's not checked. It's a uh, um, is is on. That's it. Is on equals and then it's going to be user dot full screen. So this is going to be checked to see if the user is in full screen or not. Um, but this is only going to work when you click it, so it's not going to get into some weird loop. Um, I think that's everything for in here. Uh, we're going to have a main menu which is going to consist of one button. Oops, sorry. Uh, we're going to have a main menu which can consist of one button, which basically allows us to load this here. So I'm going to save those scenes there. So when I click on that, we see that we're no longer full screen because it's it's now unchecked that box because, well, we don't we're not full screen. Uh, we're 640 by 480. And we're stuck inside this box here. So this is 
good. We're, we're getting there. Okay. So now in the game settings, uh, this is our save settings here. So I want to create a new, I basically want to create this object here. So var quality uh, or var settings equals new game option settings. And instead of uh, using these values, I'm going to pass in the values that I get from these parameters. So I'm going to do width, uh, width, and then height, and then full screen. Okay. So those are those settings there. And I want to uh, save those settings out. So I want to say if file dot exists. Oh, sorry. I want to copy this. So. Uh, I'm going to copy these two lines here, so these two lines here from our uh, load. So if the file exists, I want to do file.delete full path. And then I want to write out the contents of that file. So I'm going to do file.write all text full path, and then the content is going to be json utility dot um, to json, and then it is uh, my settings that I created up there at the very top. So that's that. But I also want to apply settings. So I'm going to create another function here called apply settings, because when I save it, I then want to um, once I've saved it, I want to apply those those changes. But I also want to apply those changes when I load something in from here, because right now it, it just loads it straight in and doesn't do anything with it. So I want to do var settings equals that, and then I'm going to say apply settings, settings. And I'm going to create a new method. I'm going to do it the lazy way. And inside here, I am going to say quality dot set uh, quality call itty dot settings dot set quality level settings dot quality and then for the screen resolution it's just gonna be screen dot set resolution and then it is settings dot width settings dot height and then settings dot full screen. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So this is um, apply quality and resolution settings for game. User options. So that's the user options in there. And then um, it doesn't return any. So I need to do return settings. Uh, read in the, the actually the, it's reading the contents of the setting file. Uh, apply the settings. Um, make up a default one. Um, and that's us for the scripts. I think uh, I think we're good. So we've got a singleton pattern. This gets loaded in. Um, we apply it when we, we load in the settings. Um, and so we need to create a new scene now. So a couple of new scenes. So our first scene is going to be our default scene. So our default scene is... Um, uh, this is going to be our settings singleton. So our settings singleton is going to be uh, game settings. And that's it. The only thing it, it has in there is it's got um, uh, scenes. So this is our first scene. So this is our first scene. It doesn't contain anything else. But I do want to create another one, which is first scene controller. 
and the first team controller is going to do pretty much what the 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 option scene controller does which is it is going to wait um, for the game settings to start and then once it starts it's going to load the main menu so it's this already exists in the scene so it doesn't need to create it but i do want to wait until it's ready which means it's loaded the the, the user settings so uh, while uh, game settings dot instance dot is ready. So while it's not ready, um, we'll turn null. And then just for added safety, I'm going to do public string next. Uh, I'm going to make it main menu, but uh, you never know. Uh, we might actually do it to something else. So scene manager. Uh, dot load scene next scene. Okay, so I'm gonna wait. Um, I'm gonna wait for this to become ready, uh, and then when it becomes ready, I'm gonna load the next scene, which is our main menu. All right, and that is our. Uh, this is game settings. That's game settings, and I also want to create an empty one, and this is called um, uh, wait for settings. And that is going to be first, first scene controller, and then next scene is our main menu. Okay. And so now we need to create a new, another new scene. And the other new scene is just going to be um, um, a single button in the middle of the screen, which is going to say options. Um, scenes, and this is called main menu. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll add these to the build settings. So I'm going to add all of these scenes here. So first scene, main menu, options, and then our options. Uh, I'm gonna do a little, another little trick I've used over the course of, of Unity, which is I'm gonna create a um, button to next scene. So button to next scene. Um, and uh, redo it all, and this is going to require a component button. So I'm going to add this to the scene, and when it starts up, I'm going uh, to do um, get component button dot on click dot add listener, and then the listener is just going to be. Um, what is this going to be? Um, um, load scene. Like string, and then it's going to be scene name. Scene manager, again, I'm going to add that there. Load scene, scene name. Um, that would be type of button. So, what this does is it adds an on click event automatically, so I don't need to go around and like add um, on click events to everything, it just, it just works. I could also create another button that does this specific thing, but eh, you get the, the gist. Okay, so uh, I have a button here, and then I just add my uh, button to next scene, and then my button to next scene is gonna be uh, called, is it options? It's just options. Okay, so now when I run this, um, and I click on options, 
it loads the options page there and hopefully cancel takes me back to the main menu as well. All right, so everything is uh, good. Uh, so if we go to uh, our first scene and we run this, so this takes us to the main menu. Um, although annoyingly, our game settings Why is our game settings not? Uh, why are our game settings not there? Our game settings should be there. Why are they not there? just weird uh, what uh, let me just uh, debug this I was kind of hoping the fact that the game settings would be coming along for the right okay so this is the first scene um, game settings is there um, it is marked as a singleton don't destroy on load. Okay. Uh, it's got an instance. Um, uh, what? a difference in let me just try something application dot load level um, let me just try this I know it's deprecated and all that kind of stuff but if I try this with the first scene nope That's uh, that's not good. So, why the heck is that not working? So if I load this, I go to options, and then I click on cancel. That doesn't unload it, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, that's not any good. Okay, here's a thought. Maybe it's because it's part of the scene. Maybe I'm not being clever enough. Maybe I should just do that. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna force a load for the singleton much like we did for the options. Maybe I'm just I'm just overthinking it by adding that there. Okay, that's all right, my bad, sorry. Uh, okay, <laughs> so mental note to self. Uh, what we want to do is we want to create a, a scene in here that basically creates those those singletons uh, by default. So we're gonna put that at zero, zero, zero because it makes it look nicer. Um, and then you want to create it in code rather than just adding it to the scene, otherwise it doesn't seem to work. Well, I'm sure it did before. Is this a problem with five, six, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you'll see that the singleton is now loaded in here, so when I click on options, it won't create another one that's it's already got there. So we don't need to, to worry about that. Okay, so everything's working there. What I want to do is I want to build the settings here. Um, 
and I want to build for PC. I want to build it, um, and I'm going to create this inside a folder here called builds. And this is going to be called settings example. And I'm going to let that build. Wow, we're at one hour, 15 minutes for this. That's insane. Okay. Uh, all right, so if I bring the build over here and I click on the settings example, you'll see that we now have this over here, which is fine. And you see they've done the, the tidy up in here as well. Uh, and you see they've got this window and all that kind of stuff. We want to get rid of this. So we'll get rid of this in just a sec. So I'm going to make this... Um, 800 by 600 and I'm going to make it windowed and I'm going to click on play. So I'm going to go in here and it's going to come up into here and we're going to get our options menu here. So hopefully it should say 800 by 600 when we click on options and it should not, it should be in windowed mode so it shouldn't be full screen. Okay, so we're, oops, uh, so we're 800 by 600. So if I change that to uh, let's try 1280 by 720 and I want to make that full screen as well and I want to click on apply. So now we're at that resolution and I can go to options and I can change that to fastest and I can uncheck the full screen although it does say 800 by 600. Hmm. And then we click on apply. Uh, oh, I checked full screen. Oh, so full screen's not working. Full screen's not working. Resolution's not working. And none of this is working. So none of this is saving. So let's just apply that. Okay. I think I know why, actually. So if I go to here, the reason why is because it only works on a wake. So it only loads on a wake. Uh, so when we awaken this, it um, loads the settings and then applies them. And it, you see that it's got the user options here. So what we want to do is we want to apply those options to that. We want to remember that basically, because remember this is this is constantly in memory. So we want to apply the settings. So when we apply the settings, um, maybe what we should do is. Uh, once we save it, is we have user options equals, I'll bring this up a bit, settings. So we want to write the contents of the settings to the disk, uh, apply the settings for this session. Remember the settings for the next time this is called. Okay, and now I'm going to build this again. Mm -mm. Uh, actually, I'm going to go into player settings and then uh, defaults for us. Uh, capture single screen, where is this one here? Full screen switch, board aspect ratios. Um, Where's the other one? Um, display resolution dialog. I want that disabled. Because I don't want the user to, to see it, I just want it to pop up. I want to have the... Uh, sorry, I couldn't see that there. Um, I want the, the user not to see that dialogue pop up. I want to be able to see the... I just want I just want them to use my settings. So I'm going to click on build there. I'm going to get rid of that old one. I'm going to drink some of my cold coffee now. Because it's been almost an hour and a half. That is uh, currently stone cold. All right, so we're in this setting just now. Uh, all right, so we go to options, and you see that we're in fastest. 
and I'm going to choose that to fantastic and I'm going to choose 640 by 480 and I'm going to click on apply and you see that we're now down to this resolution here I'm going to click on options which obviously we haven't scaled for there but you know I'll, I'll leave that to you guys there um, and I'm going to choose uh, 16900 and I'm going to make that full screen and you see that we're now in in full screen mode here okay and all that works there so I'm going to quit out um, and I think that's uh, that's it so yeah that's quite a quite a lengthy video there so I apologize um, for it being so long but when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. So anyway, that's uh, that's how you would do, uh, or at least an example of how you could do uh, settings uh, for your uh, for your game. All right, quite a busy one uh, there. I, I ooh, that was a long video. Um, so I, yeah, uh, these things happen, you know. Uh, you, you get kind of stuck in the zone and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, if uh, if you liked the video, then uh, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, uh, thumbs. Let me know uh, down below. Uh, fill in those comments and hit that subscribe button and mash the likes and whatever I don't just if you get something out of these videos that's all I need that's that's fine I don't need anything else I don't need any ego massaging or any of that stuff and uh, okay that end rant <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, um, I hope you enjoyed the video anyway, and until next time, um, uh, take care. Bye-bye.